Hey there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. I'm your host Pat Sun and today we're gonna be taking a look at r slash surviving infidelity where OP finally woke up, divorced his wife, and is taking almost all of his money. Let's begin. Life 2.0 I almost don't care anymore. Should I? Posted by Reddit user Zeal's Ideal Ring 90. Hello, my wife and I have been married for 16 years. We have three children. I'm 43, she's 44. When we were dating and even engaged, I was plagued by the feeling that I was making a giant mistake. We didn't really seem like each other's type. I'm lazy, she's efficient. I'm a talker, she's a doer. I'm sentimental but selfish. She on other hand doesn't have sentimental bone in her body, but is a tremendous giver. She never looks in the mirror, but she's gorgeous. In addition to being a superwoman type, runs 7 miles every day all year, excels in her career. Makes healthy wonderful meals for us every day all year. She's also a super mom. The children are well adjusted, smart, happy. In bed, we work fine. She's a little inhibited, but isn't that what the husbands always say? I have loved her for being such a giving, selfless person. She has also been fun loving and easy to please. I love her parents and my parents love her. Yet a personal level, as in being able to really connect mentally, it has never been strong between us. She reads so many books, but never really wants to talk about them. I know this sounds lame of me, and I understand if you stop reading. We see a movie, and she's content to say a few remarks like it was funny, or scary, or she liked it, and then she moves on. I could talk about a movie, good, bad, boring, fun, scary, doesn't matter, all night. I'm not saying these are character flaws, just illustrations of how we're different. But different doesn't mean a marriage is doomed. A marriage can thrive on differences. I have often felt ours did for that reason. Also, she has an admitted tendency to diffuse situations by saying what will pacify someone instead of the harder truth. These instances have almost always been minor things, though. Like me asking one time where a little painting went that our daughter did in pre-K, and she saying she didn't know. A minute later, I found it in the trash, and got really mad not because it was in the trash, but because she wouldn't admit, yes, I threw it out. The kitchen's messy. There are a few more examples I could give you like that, and only a few. She also probably chose that untruthful route because I have gotten mad about her throwing stuff out too early in my opinion, like Christmas cards. So there you go. Basically, she's one of these amazing take care of everybody people, and I'm a full of himself person who takes her for granted and finds her to be somewhat uninteresting. We've always been on the very same page regarding raising the kids, money, religion, politics, both of us apolitical basically, and sex. Jealousy has never been an issue between us that I'm aware of. Back when we were dating there was a friend of hers from graduate school who seemed keen on her, but I wasn't bothered. He later cheated on his wife, and the husband of his lover came and threw coffee on him at work. I loved that story. There was another guy a few years ago that she worked with that was kind of hyperactive and loud. And at her 40th birthday party at our house he wanted to take a picture of a photo of her in her high school prom dress that I'd included on a poster collage of her from across the years. I thought that was weird and I did think, gee that guy's sketchy, but that was about it. Plus she'd always say you, about him when I made a joke about it. That being said, two and a half years ago I suddenly became highly alarmed by her friendship with a different man she works with. I'd never felt anything close to this before about anybody. I met him at the YMCA. His children played soccer with our children that fall. I'd heard of him, but never met him. She'd told me previously she thought we could be friends, that he liked playing basketball too and was looking for a pickup game. So we started seeing him on Saturday mornings at kids' soccer games. He was very friendly to me, very friendly to her, very friendly to her parents. They stood closely. She has big 1,000-watt smile around him. She has a beautiful big smile. She pretty much glows. I realized, oh, she and him really know each other well. This was not merely an acquaintance, but a very good friend. I also noticed that his somewhat overweight, and, for what it's worth, anti-vaxxer wife seemed grumpy with him whenever she was there. I attempted to talk with her, but there was something that didn't really click between us. She seemed kind of distracted by him not attending to their 18-month-old, or not helping her with the bags and stroller, etc. Initially, I joked about it with my wife. Probably a mistake. Well, that guy's into you, and his wife's not happy with him. Stuff like that. My wife sort of shrugged then off, said I had nothing to worry about. About two months later, one night just as we're starting to make love, my wife calls me his name. I pretended I didn't hear, and being the dog that I am, just continued with what we were doing. The next morning, however, I brought it up. At first she denied it, but then admitted it, saying she didn't know why she said it, and she was so embarrassed and sorry. 
I know her, and I know how she could have just made a mistake. Like who doesn't have random things go through one's mind even during intimacy, especially when you've been married for 14 plus years. So I tried hard not to let it bother me, and she definitely tried hard to make up for that, and I noticed and we were fine. Except we were not fine. Because I was still aware that this man texted her occasionally on weekends to see if she wanted to meet up with kids. Our kids had become genuine friends with his. She would tell me this, by the way. Like, oh, hey they're going to be at the park. At the time, neither she nor I kept locks on our phones. I did sometimes look through her phone. At her photos, her texts. Just kind of took it for granted that I could do that and that it wouldn't bother her. As fall turned to winter, and winter became spring. I became increasingly bothered by her phone buzzing on a set mid-morning or a Sunday afternoon and knowing there was a chance it was him texting about going to the park or maybe a work-related thing. Something innocuous, but still it was starting to get under my skin. One early spring evening at the YMCA, we were there as a family and my wife had a sore leg that she wanted to treat in the hot tub, so I stayed in the gym with the kids messing around. And then my middle daughter ran into the gym saying, Daddy, guess who's here? And it was him and by that point I was like whoopie. I was thinking, well where is he? Turned out he was working out or something and then when he saw my wife in the hot tub, he got in with her. And they were talking in there for a while and my blood was boiling. I suppose a more secure husband would not care. But when we got home, I was like that guy is a douche, I'm sorry. Who does that? I would never get in the hot tub with a woman I worked with, especially if I knew her husband was in the gym right there. Well my wife was ticked off at me for being mad about it. Jealousy is not a good look. Jealousy does not make one attractive. I've learned that the hard way. I want to point out that in the winter, prior to this hot tub thing, I had started playing basketball on Tuesdays nights with him at the YMCA. And the thing is, I really did enjoy playing with him. I liked his selflessness, and he had an old school back to the basket game I respected. I also felt like he was not as good as me, and made sure to beat him the one time we played one-on-one. When it ended, he mentioned that he was feeling a little under the weather, which he'd already told me. This is pathetic of me, I know, so I was trying to be friends with him. And let it be understood that this guy was always really very nice to me. Well summer was fine. We had a nice road trip to Colorado. We all had a fun adventure. My wife wanted to make love several times during those eight days, which I didn't expect. It was a really nice vacation. On the second to last day of the road trip, I experienced a stomachache that basically hasn't gone away after a year and a half. I've had it checked out, it's nothing. It's aging, it's anxiety, I don't know. At the end of the summer, my uneasiness about him and her began to rapidly escalate. We had an argument over the phone one day over why her phone was turned off at a time, when I wouldn't expect it to be off. I was trying to call her but it went straight to voicemail. She claimed it's because it was broken, but then admitted it was because she was mad at me about blowing her off earlier that day. Which was true, I did. Then one day I was looking at our online phone bill, and I decided suddenly to look at her data usage for her phone. I'd never done that before, as it had never occurred to me, and I wish I'd never ever done it then. It was the first of many things I started snooping into, and every time I looked, my conscience and God said, don't. But I did anyway. So Elle looked at her data usage and felt like Shelley Duvall in The Shining. I saw that she and him texted all the time, going back months, even a year. I saw that they texted every day of spring break for about 25 minutes in the morning when we were visiting my parents. I say spring break because I am a teacher and she is an administrator for the same school district. I saw that a few times earlier that summer, she and he had talked on the phone for an hour a Saturday or Sunday afternoon when she went for her walk. I was freaked out. I probably should have taken some literal and figurative breaths and asked, okay, does this really mean anything bad happened? Or at least said to myself, okay, what's the best way to react to this if you want to protect your marriage? But instead I just flipped out, big time. That night actually we had a date, and my sister had our kids at her place for a sleepover, but I ruined that date halfway through by suddenly saying, hey, what's up with this? I know you two are friends, but you have a boyfriend is what you have. I went full ogre on her. I mean I wasn't throwing things, but I was an ogre. She said yes they text a lot at work, because he didn't have a desk phone and they do work together closely on many things, which I know is true. Plus I know her personality. And she's not a waste time texter, no matter how much she might like somebody. But I couldn't get over the spring break texting, and the Saturday, Sunday walk and talk stuff. She said, he's my friend. I don't have many close friends here, true. Can't I have a friend? That expression touched me, I have to say. But I kept going and digging and snooping. I wasn't sleeping well. She, in the meantime, was trying desperately to keep me happy. We were still making love, although I was very unable to really get into it, which I think in turn bothered her. 
I looked at her iPad, which she kept in the car. It had recent locations set to on. This was not something I anticipated. I looked and scrolled and saw something anomalous. A place she'd been to once a week in later summer, just a few weeks prior, for about 30 minutes each time, right in the middle of the workday. It was pretty much on the edge of our city. A residential neighborhood by hiking trail and golf course. A shot in the dark. I googled the street name along with the guy's last name. I have come to learn that this is called pain-seeking behavior. What popped up? Not making this up. His parents have a condo right there. They don't live there usually, but it belongs to them. In other words, it's often empty. Her car was parked right in front of that condo. With the iPad in it, recording the location. Yeah. So I'm like, yep, it's an affair. There's no other explanation. I call her then and there at work. I say what I've found. She asks me to tell her again where it was showing, and I told her. She paused and then said brightly, Oh, that's where I walk sometimes. I consider what she's saying. She has always taken walks during the workday. I know that. She keeps sneakers in her car for that reason. The condo is directly across from a trailhead, the park entrance, like right across from it. When I mention, Yeah but that place belongs to his family, what's up with that? Why there of all places? She says, I don't know anything about a condo. I've just gone there to walk by myself. I said, that can't be true that you don't know it's his family's place. That's too big of a coincidence. And she just repeated herself. We went back and forth on this that night, and the next. I was going insane because she clearly was lying about this. I cried and banged my head on the mattress, imploring her to just admit she's sleeping with him. She will not. She says she found that place when she got lost back in that neighborhood. Driving to a nearby elementary school to drop off materials for the principal. I feel I am being gaslighted in the extreme. Our kids were surely noticing the tension between us. The third morning I leave not for work but for this place, this condo. I want to look at it with my own eyes. See how one could get lost going to the school. It's not even close. There's no way. I am so mad that I drive directly to the guy's house. I've been there for a few parties. He's not home of course, he's at work, but his wife is there. She answers, bewildered but pleasant. I'm crying. I say, hi, have you ever worried about our spouses? She looks at me, sighs, and says, I have, yes. She invites me in, and asks me what's bothering me. I tell her everything I've written here. She's very relaxed and basically says, well, if it is, we'll know soon enough, and if it isn't, we can laugh about it later. Much better perspective than me. We keep in touch via text and she says she asked him and he said there's nothing. He, in the meantime, was very alarmed and came to work and told my wife, which I figured would happen. So that night we have it out. She says, yes he told me there's a good trail there because he knows I like hiking. I didn't tell you because you'd be mad either way. This is true. But I was like, how dare you look me in the eye for two straight nights and lie to me about this. She was so incensed with me for going over there. Well, that was about a year and a half ago. Since then, her attitude towards me runs between mildly affectionate, little hugs, and being outright pissed off at me. My attitude has been pretty much non-stop. You're in love with this guy, admit it. I have stopped saying that in confronting her with that, but I still feel it. We don't go on dates anymore. I've calmed down a lot. We've had calm conversations about getting divorced, but it seems we both don't actually want that. She is the one who suggests it, and I'm like we can make this work. She sometimes tells me she loves me still. She wears her ring, mostly. She wants nothing to do with me physically. A very devout friend of mine was most helpful to me by saying, Dude, this issue is not the issue. It's deeper. He got me to admit that I've taken her for granted for years, and he said I must confess this to her. So I did. And it felt really good, and she softened considerably. This was about five weeks ago. She still doesn't want me, and I don't know when she ever will. There are times I think it's too broken. But then I remind myself that marriages can survive and flourish, even after real documented actual infidelity. It takes real humility. I've changed, and she's told me that. She says she can see my new leaf, but she's not ready to be close again. Occasionally I still flip out privately, like when I realize, looking through laundry the other day looking for my sweater, that she wore a thong to work. I've never seen her in a thong. But oh well. Women own them. Okay well I realize this is way too long. This has been therapeutic just to write. If anybody made it this far, wow. Thank you. If you have anything to say, go ahead. Blast me, it's fine. Okay OP, your story is a lead up to having caught her affair. But you didn't. If she's cheating on you, you just tipped your fucking hand, dude. You should have investigated before she knew you suspected her cheating. Before you confronted her. Honestly man, that's quite a stupid move. Some people find things when their spouse leaves a Facebook open on their computer, 
or they see text messages live on another device. Some look at their spouse's phone while they are in the shower or something. Some even hire a private investigator to gather evidence or lack thereof. This is very suspicious and you need to find out what's going on. Silently. Go from there. And now, for OP's first update. You see them everywhere. The married douches at work that you know are playing patty cake with each other. The ones who stand elbow to elbow close, eyes sparkling. You pity them for their obliviousness to everybody knowing. It's not a subject for the dinner table, but later in bed, or watching TV, or out with friends while the kids are on the playground. People say, so did I tell you about the drama at work. And you laugh about the douches. The guy who got coffee thrown on him by his affair partner's husband. The lady on floor 3 who's banging the IT director. The supervisor of whatever and the chief of blah. Oh whoa, so then what? And you cherish the knowledge that these things happen to other people. You embrace the security of your own marriage and family, knowing that the little quarrels and monotony and whatnot is just life. And you actually see the quarrels and monotony and whatnot as proof of your solidness and marital integrity. You always find each other, yet way down deep. Deeper even than these glowing embers of security and trust, somewhere you probably shouldn't even be going. And this is just you overthinking things again. Is there some small, niggling concern you've long had about your spouse? Something that really doesn't matter because it's always been about things inconsequential. Does every so often, like every once in a great while, like it's really only happened a handful of times in the marriage, does your husband or wife lie inexplicably when honesty seems, once again, to be the much better route? And it's made even more inexplicable because it's about something really unimportant. Like laughing about it and laughing at oneself would seem to be the easier option than trying to bury it. But you get past these moments. You get past them because 1. They are ultimately inconsequential. 2. They could drive you crazy if you don't dismiss them. And 3. Who exactly are you to hold someone to an impossible standard? Are you not just loaded with your own lazy, me first, superior bullshit? What's a white lie to your bloviating, self-absorbed way of going through life? Okay, I didn't intend to go second person on this whole thing. Just trying to wrap my mind around how we got here. My wife and I are in our mid-forties. We've been married 17 years. We have three children. And after two years of thinking about it, I hired a private investigator last week for last Friday. One of the most nerve-wracking days of my life. Please nothing go wrong Fargo style. Please let it not be true. Although how can it not be? And if it is an affair, please let today be the day it's discovered. And not that she's using her afternoon off from work just buying cat food but tomorrow at the hotel on the interstate. People I know have said why don't you just walk away. A therapist, whom my wife encouraged me see when I first started getting really agitated about this whole deal a few years ago, basically said just walk away, you don't need to find out. My buddy got slowly faded out by his wife during this same stretch of time, 2018 to now, and he was not consumed by the need to know what she was up to. Lots of Redditors say the same thing. My answer is messy and full of conflicting motivations. The three kids, I'm not crazy, am I? Maybe she'll snap out of it now. Don't start. I know what you all say and I get it. And just overall this not knowing is a nightmare. And I need it to end. One thing that's always kept me doubting my suspicions has been the question of when. When exactly is she doing this? She herself has asked me that. Like so when is it that I would be having this alleged affair? Citing how busy she is with everything. God, if I end up with someone else, please may they not be somebody who recites laundry list style their sad morning accomplishments. Hey, I changed the sheets, fed the cats, put gas in my car, got groceries, went to the bank, boned my boyfriend, took kids to the park. Did you finish reading Dilbert? Well the answer to when is apparently her time off. Afternoons on Fridays, every month or so. Going back at least a year and a half. Some days when the kids and I have been out of town camping. I learned this through snooping. Judge me, I understand. I'm just not sure what I should have done. You feel you're being lied to. Your spouse is telling you that 2 plus 2 equals 5. You'd like to believe that, yet your experience with the world tells you that it is not 5. So you look at the phone data log. You see a crap ton of contact there, way more than you even thought there'd be. You check out her email while she's in the shower. You see tons of deleted messages about hey, how's your morning? And a lot of acronyms the meaning of which you have no idea. Then she calls you his name in bed. That was three years ago. Actually, the calling you his name in bed came first. Then you started snooping. Eventually after you snoop too much, she just says I'm done with you. And she has decided that you two will no longer be intimate. The days turn to weeks, which become months, which of course become the three years I'm looking at now. I have not sought out other women. We have nice family time on the weekends. Our relationship is incredibly shallow. 
We do not go on dates, and every so often when I ask her how she's doing, she says I don't feel trusted still. I manage to make it by reading a lot, working out like crazy, and having fun with the kids. So yes, finally I said I've got to call a private investigator. I knew she was taking off work 12 to 5 p.m. last Friday. The private investigator people were extremely helpful and professional, and they ask you a lot questions first to see why you want this done and what you plan to do with the information they find. Then the day comes and you're nervous as hell. But the next thing you know the day is over, and you get home from your adventure with the kids and your wife is home from her day at work, and she's cheerful and happy, and to a casual observer it looks like an intact family. Then you get a voicemail message from the private investigator firm coordinator saying, Hello, just calling here to say that your suspicions are confirmed. We will talk to you on Monday. So it's the longest weekend of your life, and you're just barely able to keep it together. And of course your wife notices, and as a result she's super friendly. This is the pattern. And then on Monday after work the lady calls you and tells you some painful stuff. They leave work in two cars, drive to another location, get in his car, then drive to a state park and wildlife refuge, where they have a picnic and kiss and hug on the blanket. Lovey-dovey on the blanket is how the lady put it. And then they head to a cabin where they spend some time together. Apparently, they've checked in many times at this place, signing in under an alias each time. How the private investigator figured this out I do not know yet. Then they leave and then she comes home at the end of the day. They're going to send the full report tomorrow or Wednesday, with hour by hour and timelines and photos. We got some very good photos of PDA. I'm not looking forward to seeing these. This lady was intentionally vague about some things in her overview today, and I believe the reason they stretch it out is to gauge how you are reacting and to see if you're somebody they need to alert the police about. Or that's my guess as to why she gives a kind of generic overview a few days before the full report comes in. Anyway, so tonight Monday after work, after I talked to this lady from my car, I was pretty pissed when I got home. I kept it together until everybody went to bed and my wife came downstairs to go for her evening walk and I said hey, and then not yelling, not even really looking at her just told her that I know. I know now. I'm sure it's not fun to live with a husband who knows about your affair and is a monitoring ogre about it, but it is so not fun to live with someone having an affair for years and lying about it and blaming me for being erratic. And she got wide-eyed and said, There is no affair, there never has been, and I just said stop, please stop. I want to respect you in the years to come. Please stop. She tried a few more times to protest, to say there's nothing going on, but the thing about when you know with 100% certainty is you just don't put up with it. Eventually she got very quiet and was wringing her hands and I stood up to go and she said softly, here, sit here, but I have been manipulated too many times now by her to do that anymore and I told her that. Then I went out for a drive and called my buddy. I have only told him and another buddy. I have not told anyone in my family or her parents or anything. I want to work this out with her first and for her to know that I haven't told any family. I still love her. I think she's like a child with her dishonesty. I don't think I can ever trust her again. We'll probably get divorced. I hate to think how the kids will react. I mean they know we're not right, but still they don't deserve this. I want to tell the guy's wife, but not yet. I also am trying to figure out how to confront him. I really don't want to waste breath on him. I don't want to ruin livelihoods. His three kids are nice kids. I don't want their dad fired. Guy's a complete douche tool. Barely worth it. But still I gotta say something. What would you do? Also, I can't really stand being around my wife right now, like it's challenging being in the same house so far with her. I feel like getting an apartment as soon as possible. But some people might say, why should you move out? I just don't want to get into a battle of who is moving out. I want to be around our kids as much as possible, which is one major reason I've stuck around here during this crisis. I feel like moving out might snap her out of the fog. Do I want to get back together with her? Maybe, if she's genuinely able to reflect on this and see the damage she's done. I know what my flaws have been that have made her unhappy. They don't justify her colossal dishonesty and Lance Armstrong like lashing out. But if I hadn't been so ignorant of what she needed from me over the years, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Who knows? Alright, thanks for reading. I guess my intended takeaways are, trust your gut. Private investigators can really help you. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. If my wife doesn't want to genuinely reconcile, at least I know I'm not crazy anymore. OP, don't move out until you talk to a lawyer. Make sure that it will not come and bite you back in the ass in the future. And plan your next move based on your lawyer's advice. Look man, your kids probably sense the tension. As tough as it is to grow up in a divorce family, I mean I should know I grew up in one, but dude, 
Modeling unhealthy relationship patterns is also not ideal. I've said this many times on this channel. Children growing up in a toxic household is much, much worse than growing up in a divorced household. Just keep that in mind, OP. And also, I don't think you should confront the affair partner. But what you should do is tell his wife. Tell her that you have irrefutable evidence. It's up to her to decide what she wants to do with that information. And one last thing, OP. If you really think that there's a chance of reconciliation, after literal years of lies, gaslighting, disrespect, and manipulation, then you're a fucking moron. And now, for OP's second update. There are the folks that know just what to say in the moment, but I'm in the other category. I'm hoping not to engage too much if at all next week after we have our mediation. But seeing that we're both still living under the same roof, I want to be prepared for her potential volcano. There may be none, as she's very measured and even-tempered. But what's going to come out during mediation are the private investigator obtained photos and video of her, and her classy affair partner kissing at their little afternoon time off picnic rendezvous and then them driving in his car to his parents' empty condo to be there for the rest of the afternoon. She continues to be very cheerful and friendly with me and is going along with the divorce without actually wanting to talk about it at all. It's beyond surreal because I can barely look at her and I barely talk to her, which I know is weird for our three kids to see. By the way, one of my non-negotiables next week is the house. No, sorry, you doing this and then me leaving to find an apartment. I know you keep the calendar and make the kids' appointments and make lunches, but no. Basically, for four years she said, we're friends, you're insecure, you're seeing things that aren't there, you're insulting me with your suspicions. I'd never do that, I'm a professional, he's very professional, etc. And now this Friday there's going to be this reckoning. My guess is she's either one, going to minimize it, it was just this one time or two, go absolutely batshit insane and call me a controlling psycho. The third possibility I suppose is she gets severe crocodile tears, mainly to keep me from blowing the affair partner up with his wife. It has taken no small dose of self-control to not contact her already. My lawyers have been licking their chops since the day I came in back in March, and they've said we know it's hard, but don't do anything like that. Not now, just stay steady. Some very good Reddit friends and my family have said the same. Anyway, my attitude is to come home after the mediation and at the most say, yep, I did actually do that and say no more, but I'd like to be equipped with some terse, pithy, potentially withering rejoinders. I know enough now that her character is fixed and it doesn't really matter, so really, it's a mood exercise. But maybe I'll feel better in the moment. Thanks y'all. Oh thank god you didn't try reconciliation again. Whew. Good on you, OP. Look man, I understand that the desire for an on-point verbal smackdown, but do you know what says fuck you better than the actual words themselves? Silence. That's right, OP. Engagement and conflict is what they seek so they can fix their narrative of you and what you deserve in their little minds. Take that fucking away from them, OP. I know it doesn't seem like it, but refusing to engage, refusing to play that game, is power. OP. It sounds like you are about to destroy her We just grew apart, I'm not a piece of shit Narrative at mediation Keep doing it man And now for OP's final update After hiring a private investigator to confirm in March what my stomach had been telling me since 28 I filed for divorce but didn't let her know what I knew nor how it was one of the hardest stretches of my very easy life, living under the same roof from then until mid-September, when our decree was finalized and I was off her loan and I moved into my own place. One of my non-negotiables was me not leaving the house. Didn't happen. As our July 15th mediation wore on, my lawyer pointed out that if I really wanted to fight for the house, it would cost me a lot in court, and I might not be awarded it. He said, she's leaving you very cash rich, this would be considered a very good day in court. I grudgingly conceded. Later, when I told my sisters about it, they were not happy. I dare say they were disappointed in me. The night that I came home from mediation, I went on to Zillow and found a place nearby. It was a two-story condo, three bedrooms, three bath. It looked nice, clean, modern. The kids could bike there in ten minutes. I saw the place with a realtor the next day, and like happens sometimes with love, it was an immediate yes. Never before had I cared about counters, cabinets, stainless steel ranges, fridges with the exterior water and ice access on the door, wood floors, etc. Suddenly I had a vision of life 2.0 with the kids there, 
and I didn't want to see anything else. Well it's been a month now. We've gone through the two, two, five custody cycle a few times now. I love the Wednesday to Sunday stretch I have with our three. I miss them a lot during the Fridays and Tuesdays time they have with her. But I do drive with the oldest every day to and from work because she is a freshman at the high school where I work. With the eldest's help, I'm learning to cook for real now and it has been so fun. For the first time ever, I've purchased seasonings beyond salt and pepper. I know what oregano is now. I just put garlic powder in the vegetable pie we made Sunday night. I have cumin. The kids say, Dad, you've actually been making some pretty good dinners. Baby steps. We've found nice furnishings for the house, and the way we've got it set up now is very pleasing. I want them to know that our time together can be just like always. Have friends over, go to friends' houses. It doesn't have to be full-time activities with Dad, and it just feels very, 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 very good and relaxed. It's amazing actually, all things considered. Which brings me to my question. I'm finding myself way less consumed by anger and bitterness and despair. They surface a little when I see my ex at our son's soccer games. For all I know, she's still banging her married with kid's boyfriend. She probably hasn't told him that I know. By the way, she's acknowledged it now, but only via text. She has written, I'm sorry, I know you didn't deserve it, and I'm sorry for the pain I caused. In person, she has said nothing. Regarding that, she has texted, I'm not ready yet to talk about it. Yeah, I know. Disgusting. I did text back. I wasn't ready for four years of lies. No response. In person, she couldn't be nicer. Yes, it's nauseating. The point is, not living with her and not seeing her has been amazing. The only thing I'm wondering is, should I contact the affair partner's wife? I did talk to that lady three times over the course of these last four years, and she knows there's something off. She even said, if there's something going on, it'll end in the next few years. I almost feel like she knows. My whole family says just move on, look ahead. She's weird, you tried, etc etc. And that's how I feel pretty much. Every so often I have a dark vision of dropping a nuclear bomb on his family. But seriously I'm thinking it could just mess up the good thing that seems to be getting better and better by the hour now, practically. She does deserve to know, the affair partner's wife though, right. But, how can she not? Am I being selfish here? Or cowardly? I'm just feeling like they're all losers. She was no help to me during this time and whatever. OP, okay. So let me get this straight. You haven't told the affair partner's wife yet. After all this time, and you are asking for our opinion? No. No. No, 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 no. You fucking selfish, cowardly asshole. How fucking dare you? You mut- You little You son of a fucking I'm going to tear off your and shove them right up your and then on your with in the and your so then you'll have to sideways okay 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 calm yourself pat son you need to be professional big deep breaths okay op look once you are free and the divorce has cleared and you can safely from an asset standpoint do it, you should do it. Nuke their fucking shit. I'll give you two reasons. Number one, agency. His wife deserves agency the same way you did, man. You know how it felt not knowing and struggling to find out. Your gut screaming at you, begging the person that you love for the truth, only to be gaslighted and lied to again and again. Come on, OP. She deserves to make the same choices that you did. She deserves to get tested for STDs because who knows who else her husband has been sleeping with. Can't you understand that, man? Really? Number two. Your wife has still not owned up to her mistakes. What are her consequences, man? A text message? As an apology? I mean, that means basically nothing. That means jack shit. She's not sorry. She's trying to save face. I mean, dude, come on. You can't, you can't move forward until this chapter is closed for good. Close it. Write your own ending to it. Then enjoy your condo with your kids. And seriously, dude, please inform the affair partner's wife. You fucking dipshit. Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, I'm future Pat Sun. So uh, upon editing this video, 
I just found out that I just got really upset uh, uh, on the last update. I'm sorry about that if I curse excessively, but I'm pretty sure most of you guys do not mind. And OP, if you're listening, I'm sorry if I cussed you out. I guess I just got really caught up in my emotions because, you know, I mean, I already said the reasons on why you should do it. So I'm just going to repeat myself. Please, OP, tell the affair partner's wife. You dipshit. Viewer support is the best way for me to remain independent and continue bringing you these daily videos, which will always be here on my YouTube channel for you to watch absolutely free. So consider clicking that super thanks just below the video title or you can use my PayPal in the description box down below. Thanks for listening everyone. If you even somewhat enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you really like it, make sure to subscribe to Patson to never miss a future upload. Stay strong.